Hi, my name is Chong Din, and uh, I'm going to be doing a lecture today on uh, VPCs, which are ventricular premature contractions. And uh, VPCs are considered um, uh, ventricular dysrhythmias, meaning they occur below the um, AV node. Uh, usually, VPCs occur in um, originate, or the, the electrical conduction is originate in the Purkinje fibers instead of it being uh, instead of originating from the original source, which is the SA node. I'm going to show you a quick picture of it just to get a better illustration of what's going on. So as you can see right here, this is um, the normal electrical conductance of the heart. Usually, uh, you're, uh, in the heart, the, the con electrical conductance occurs right here where it originates in the SA node and then the electrical conductance travels down to the AV node and from there it goes down the funnel head and it branches off the right funnel branch and you got your left funnel branch. And then these are here, your Purkinje fibers down here. This is where the, um, the VPCs are, uh, occur. So instead of starting from up here, it's starting from down here. And um, usually patients, they come in uh, saying that, oh, my heart is beating rapidly or they say, oh, my, head, my heart is like tying around my chest. That kind of stuff, and then, and if a patient presents that way, well, you definitely want to do an EKG just to check on, check to see what's going on with the heart. And when you look at an EKG, you'll see that the QRX complex is widened. Uh, usually, a QRX complex is, should be less than 0.12 seconds, but in the case of a uh, uh, VPC, you see a, a QRX complex more than 0.12 seconds. You don't see a P wave preceding the QRX complex, and then you'll see also a uh, T wave version. I'm going to show you. A picture of the um, the uh, on the, uh, the VPCs on the EKG, which will show, and um, this is how it looks like on a, an EKG right here. Um, the VPC will look like this. If you can see that where that circle is right there, that's a uh, is how a classic um, sign of a VPC would look like. So you have the QRS complex is widened. You do not see a P wave before the QRS complex, and you see a a T wave right there. Inverted T wave, and that's definitely um, how a VPC would look like. Um, um, let's talk about treatment plan. If a patient comes to you, um, if a patient comes to you that is having, uh, and you diagnose it's a VPC, and the patient is asymptomatic, you don't need any treatments. Uh, no treatment is required because it is a benign condition. But if the patient is symptomatic, they're having frequent VPCs that's affecting their um, daily activities or um, their normal routine of life, then you want to definitely start them on beta blockers, which are first line treatments for them. And if, um, if beta blockers don't work, there are other medications, which are the class, um, class one or class three antiarrhythmic agents, but we try not to put them on it because they do have a lot of side effects. So those are really, um, try not to use them as much as possible. But if these uh, drug treatments don't work whatsoever a good option for a patient to treat VPCs is to do a catheter ablation which is um, what they do is they put a catheter into the heart and try to get to the area where uh, the, the precursor fibers where the electric conductance abnormal electric conductance is occurring and they try to burn it burn a um, burn that spot right there in order to get rid of that abnormal conduction um, and pretty much um, that is a uh, it's pretty effective and it usually treats the patient um, so that's pretty much uh, uh, about BPCs and the treatment plan, and uh, thank you for uh, listening to this lecture series.